Hello, hello. Is everyone sleepy after lunch? Yes? I'll wake you up. Watch this. Okay, so I'm going to talk about mobile dApps, okay? And in general dApps and what technologies we are bringing uh, for you, for every single dApp that you are building to make your life simpler. Okay, so about me, uh, my name is Ankur. Uh, I've been with the Solana mobile team for the last six months-ish. Uh, I'm working on dApp store, mobile wallet adapter, and a bunch of other things that I'm going to showcase today. So, want to talk to you about like, what do users want um, with Web3? What do you think? And I'm going to keep it like pretty informal, so talk to me. Um, and if we have some mics, um, we can pass around um, so I can talk to people. What what are you guys building? Uh, let's let's take some examples. Anyone? Anyone? Nope. No one's building anything. Just free lunch. Just just yell it. Okay. Okay, so you are already there. You are already mobile. I, I wanted to talk to someone who is uh, not mobile and, and, and try to see if I can convince you to go mobile or, or like want to understand why you're not mobile. No? No? Okay. Yeah? For drift? So, um, so what do you do? Like, what, what uh, don't you have on mobile? You're not native, but but you are on mobile, right? Okay. So, okay, I, I'll I'll walk through some use cases on what people are usually building and uh, what you can be building. So, just want to quickly show this slide, um, uh, showing like why mobile is so important. If you, the numbers are like really very tiny, but if you look through them, um, there are like billions of people on mobile and they are not on desktop. They are not like pulling out their giant machines and like saying, oh, I have to mint an NFT. Oh, this mint is coming up. Like, let me do something about it. Like you are missing out on so many users um, if you are desktop only, uh, if you are not mobile. 83% of the population has a smartphone. The rest, 17% 17 are probably living under the rock or like just born or like too old. But the entire population basically has a smartphone. And the numbers I showed on the previous slide, there are some countries where people have more than one smartphone. One for like primary use case, one for like secondary use case, and if you look at emerging market, China, India, um, like literally everyone has a mobile plan, but they don't have a broadband plan. Like those people are on mobile and you want to reach a whole lot of people. If you want to reach a whole lot of people, you need to go mobile. So that's my proposition. Um, and, and this thing, um, when I graduated uh, 2012, um, every every single Web2 company like Amazon and uh, I, I grew up in India like Flipkart, Walmart, every single one was chanting this one thing, mobile first, mobile first, mobile first. And every single Web2 company has changed their strategy since 2012. Um, they are not like building only for, for, uh, for, uh, for the desktop, they are mobile first. For example, like take, take Netflix into account. In India, they have a very specific plan for mobile phone users only. That's two bucks a month. Compared to US, it's, I believe, 14 or $15 a month, but I, I, I have no clue. But like, it's on a totally different scale. You have a different market, you need to tackle that market differently. And giant markets like India and China, uh, they're spending a lot of money and everything is mobile. So you need to be on mobile. And we'll talk about like what we will help 
you to get onto mobile. So what do you want to build? What do you expect from us? What we expect from you to build? Let's talk about like, okay, some examples. Okay, so one simple idea I'm throwing out at you. Uh, build a micro transaction SDK for the Web3 domain. So assume like all the games that are doing in-app purchases, if you go to like Google Play, the minimum transaction amount is one US dollar. I think that's the minimum you can buy something for in-app. But on Web3, who's stopping you from doing like 10, 10 cent transaction? Solana is so cheap, the transaction cost is so cheap that you can actually offer somebody something for 10 cents. You can build out an entire SDK and then don't know what you want to do, but like at least not pay 30% to Google and Apple. Um, that's, that's one proposition. So this is like one simple example that I'm throwing out at you that you can build. Let's see, notification events for, um, for on-chain activity is something which you can still build. Uh, we have photos, photo editing app, video special effects, like literally think about like every single Web2 app and how you are limited there because there is a middleman between you and your consumers and that's either Google or Apple or like maybe Amazon if you are on still like Fire tablets or something like that. Uh, but always there is a middleman. Why not cut it out? Like build something completely on Web3 and we are there to help you go zero commission. We are not going to be middlemen on Dapp Store or any tech that we are providing for free to you. Or any single SDK that you guys are building. I'm not sure, like Helios, for example, they have an API. They could also build a Android SDK for, for the developers. We are seeing a whole lot of like React Native, um, SDKs, but very few like native Android iOS SDKs. So you can build that as well if you are SDK specific. Or you can scan this QR code for a whole bunch of idea that we are throwing at you. Um, build whatever you want to. The thing is, ideas are not like ideas are cheap, actually. I can throw like thousand ideas at you. Um, and, and, and the thing is, you should talk with each other openly about your ideas. Ideas should not be kept secret. Nobody is going to steal your idea and you may be thinking, oh, if I tell someone my idea, like Ankur is going to come and like steal my idea. It's not about that. Like there's a whole lot going behind the idea, the execution that you need to do and nobody can do that for you. Nobody can steal that. And that's why we open source a whole bunch of things. Or I have another idea, NFT minting app. How many of you have ever minted an NFT? One, two, okay, a bunch. How did you do it? Like, walk me through it. Like, how complex was it? How complex was it? Horribly complex? Okay. Year ago, okay. Uh, anyone else who had like easier time minting an, an NFT? Okay. Um, oh, sorry, yeah. Using the Metaplex uh, SDK, I found that when I was first investigating NFTs on Solana, it was quite simple. Um, okay. But uh, when we decided we needed some additional functionality that that didn't offer, we uh, had to roll our own solution, which was uh, quite a bit more complex. More complex, right? What's, what's the barrier in between? Like there are a bunch of steps that people don't understand, right? And, and as developers, you need to abstract that away. Like regular people, like think about regular people who do not understand cryptocurrencies at all. You as developer don't care if the user understands the underlying tech or not. You want users. Um, and, and they are paying users, right? Um, or even if they are not paying users, they will be one day paying users. Um, you are not there to like explain the tech beneath. And that's the simplicity um, 
like if things are simple and users don't understand or don't need to understand what's going below the layer and is smooth, then then it's a win-win for, for you and for the users. So I want to show this video and tell me if this is anything better than you have experienced for minting an NFT. So this is one of the photo me and my friend took. Um, it's in California. I'm just uploading the video. I signed one transaction. Boom, I have minted an NFT in less than 30 seconds. And that included me typing slowly every single thing. It actually took less than a second. Um, so that's the, uh, that's the shipwreck in Point Reyes uh, as an NFT. And I'll just refresh my wallet to show you. I have two NFTs that I minted on my own. And it was that simple. Um, but there's more. Okay. We are going to open source this entire code base. So you can feel free to copy every single thing out of it. And this is a native app. Um, you can, I don't know, monetize it, do whatever you want to do with it, treat it as sample code for connecting to wallet, minting NFT, pulling um, the data from the chain, like whatever example you want to take out of it, feel free to do that. And probably it's not open source as of now. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay, here we go. Settings. Search. Go public. Okay, I need to type a whole bunch of things. Oh, your security key, one sec. It's making me do more work than it was actually minting the NFT. Okay. My security key is in and this repository is public right now. Okay, I'll go back to the slides. Um, so anyone want to verify, I'm not lying, uh, go ahead, scan it. Uh, there are a bunch of examples in there. It's a pretty nice mobile first Android latest Jetpack Compose, um, very easy to understand, easy to follow code base. You want to copy code, that's perfectly fine with us. You want to fork the entire repository, make it your own, put something in it, uh, add more functionality on it. You want to create a pull request to us, feel, feel free to do that. If you want to do a private fork, that's fine with us as well. Okay, so that was my first part of the presentation. And I'm going to deep dive a bit more into this open source app um, and talk to you about like um, how exactly or how simple this is uh, to do. Um, so let's talk about building dApps with SMS. Um, so Solana Mobile Stack has a bunch of things, uh, including Seed Vault. So unless, um, I'm not going to repeat a whole bunch of things that I just did on the stand yesterday, but um, feel free to scan our, our GitHub uh, code link. It has a whole lot of like open source work, which uh, has uh, Seed Vault implementation. If you are a, a wallet, if you are a dApp, uh, how to use mobile wallet adapter, um, how to use Solana Pay and, and stuff like that. So not repeating all of that, but I'm going to focus on one key technology that we have. It's called mo mobile wallet adapter. That's a protocol that we developed and it's a protocol between the dApp and mobile wallet adapter acting as a middleman between you and the wallet. And then wallet and the seed vault. So uh, if you are a wallet, there is a SDK for that. If you are a dApp, there is a SDK for that. So in the video I showed you, um, as soon as I press the one of the button, like a pop-up shows up, right? Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll take back this example. So let me um, show you that connect button up on the top 
if you are seeing on both sides. Uh, it's not connected. I just loaded up uh, the app. It's showing every single photo on the gallery. By the way, these uh, photos are not really Saga photos. These are professional photos that my friend and I clicked. Um, I just loaded up to, to make it look nicer. But uh, the thing I want to show is up on the top, which is the connect button. Um, as soon as you tap, tap that, this dialog shows up. And this lists every single wallet that you have installed on your phone. So you don't have to do like open up the phantom wallet, go to their in-app browser, open Magic Eden within that, and then do the transaction. No, that's not a easy to understand thing for most users. Before I joined Solana, or even after jo I, I joined Solana, I had no idea like how hard things are on 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 Web3. Like somebody told me like um, do something and and Phantom should connect. And I, I I installed Phantom app on my on my on my phone. Uh, I had a Pixel at the time, and then um, I went to the website and I'm like, okay, I have the Phantom app. Why is this not working? I press the connect button and like nothing is happening. And and the website is saying like you do not have a wallet installed. I'm like I just installed the wallet from the from the Play Store. What's going on? Um, so so this is what. Is going on because there's a disconnect. There's no user education in between that I needed to go in the in app browser inside Phantom Wallet to do something to sign and make a contract. We are making that simple. See, this is one app communicating with the wallet, and here you have a choice. As many as wallets you have installed that support mobile wallet adapter, and that includes the top two. Soulflare, Phantom, we have upcoming support for a bunch more, um, including, not sure, Backpack, maybe, uh, Glow, maybe, um, all of those. So you'll pick one of these, and then um, you end up on this screen, and probably you are familiar with this screen on Soulflare. Uh, you just trust the app, and you're back. Um, as soon as you press Connect, um, see the top button which said Connect, it has my wallet pub key. So I've authenticated with Soulflare and it took me literally less than two seconds. And I can show you a demo live on the phone. Um, just a sec. Okay. Is my phone up live? So this is Saga. Um, so you're seeing the FBRK something something pub key on top. I'm going to disconnect that. I'm going to press connect, and then it shows up the disambiguation dialog that I have two wallets. I can pick whatever I want to. So let's pick Soulflare, and then, um, so here, I want to maybe trust this app forever that this is a genuine app, and then I go back. And I'm back to being the connected state. So, how complex do you think this piece of code would be doing all of this? Like, guess a number of lines of code that you need to write to do just this simple thing. Connect, authenticate, come back. One line? Okay. Anyone else? Anyone else? Okay, we have a winner. It's actually just one line of code. That's all. So. We are abstracting away all the difficulties that you would face doing anything. We want to do that for you so that you don't have to repeat this in every single step of your app. So that's why we have all of that. Okay, um, before I talk about tech stack, um, if nobody wants to believe me, I will show the line of code which says, this is literally one line of code. Um, um, can't prove it to you, but like it's it's up there. It says wallet view model connection dot connect, and then I pass in identity URI, icon URI, identity name. Those are constants for my app, and then activity result center sender. That's um, a singleton instance of my activity, and that's all. That's all I do, and then. In the next line, I basically 
get the uh, get the pub key. Um, and that's all I'm doing. Like literally one line of code to get you started. And there's more. It's not just connection. You get the authentication token. You can reuse the token. You can uh, you can mint the NFT. You can sign any single transaction with that authentication. It goes through this uh, the the wallet. Then it goes through uh, the seed vault. All of that is abstracted away. Um, now back to the slides. Um, so I talked a whole lot about um, everything, a bit about everything as well. So so we have mobile wallet adapter for native Java, Kotlin, Android apps. Um, that's that's what I showcased you. Other than that, other than that, we have React Native. We also have Dart and Flutter, and we have Unity SDK in development and going to be released pretty soon. Um, so this will be as seamless on every single platform that you can think of. And if there is something which is missing, let me know. Um, we can probably do something about that as well, uh, so that you don't have to write the same code over and over again. Um, so, okay, not this uh, as of now. Um, what are you guys waiting for? Like, I, I, I want to like spend some time understand, like, where, where are you finding troubles? Um, what is blocking you? Is it more ideas? Is it more support that you need from Solana? Uh, what is it like uh, that's stopping you? Like, I, I want to pump everyone uh, by showing that video and like what what not, like making it seem so simple that um, things are open source. You don't have to do a whole lot to get a whole lot. Um, so that's all. In addition to that. Um, we also have a mobile event uh, tonight. So if you want to sign up for that, um, the QR code is up for that. Um, thank you very much. And if you have any questions for me, um, I'm free. Uh, sure. Mics. Yep. Mike. Uh, so yeah. Um... What if I develop a, a new Solana wallet? Uh, so we'll have this list of Solter and Phantom, and let's say you'll have every single thing. If I if I wrote, so so mobile wallet adapter is two part. Um, okay. One is the DApps that need to implement something, and so uh, the DApps need to implement an interface to advertise themselves before the, the exactly SDK. the 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 wallet also need to implement mobile wallet adapter saying that we'll accept every single request which mobile wallet adapter interface implies like uh, that that the contract says so once you do that like we are not blocking phantom and soulflare to be shown just because they are phantom and soulflare okay if you are like xyz app or like whatever abc name you want to use it'll show up there in the disambiguation dialog we are not whitelisting, blacklisting, allow listing okay. any single thing. If you support the protocol, it'll show up. So um, if I implement this interface that mm -hmm. makes me that makes me visible in yep. this application, um, but my my wallet application is not installed, then it's not displayed in this list. Once I install it, yes. then it will be displayed. Exactly. Okay. It, this is uh, this only shows up because I have Phantom and Soulflare installed on this phone. If I go ahead and uninstall this, let me sh show you guys. Um, let me put the screen back up um, so I can show you I'm not lying. Um, I uninstall Phantom. Okay. Now I only have Soulflare in there. I go back up. I have disconnected from here. And then this time there is no disambiguation dialogue. Okay. Because Soulflare is the only app that can support it. Yeah. Oh, uh, makes sense. If I had like 10, it'll show up all 10. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? By the way, this, this tech I'm showing for mobile, it's all available for, for web as well. Like, uh, if you go to jupyter.ag or like, uh, Orca, um, and try to like do a connection using mobile wallet adapter. Uh, the same disambiguation shows up. So from Chrome or Brave browser, 
you can do the same thing and have the have the authentication token back onto your browser. So this is not just mobile. It's the exact same protocol that we have implemented for for React Native apps, for for Dart Flutter apps, for Android Native apps, and and whatnot. Okay. Um, next question. Anyone? No. No question. Okay. Where can you find me? Uh, okay, I'll be on that stand tomorrow um, between three to four, and I'm also roaming around all the time here. I don't have much work, so grab me anytime. <laughs> and we also have office hours tomorrow between five to seven, um, so grab me there. Um, I will also hand you my contact information. Um, you can reach me on Twitter. That's my Twitter username. Um, you can find me and I'll give you my telegram. I don't have it up here, uh, but um, there, there are plenty of ways to reach me or my entire team. We are all available on Discord as well. Um, Twitter, Telegram, whatever is your preferred way. Okay. Anyone else? Going once, twice. Okay, I was super clear. I'm amazing. Yep. Okay, thank you everyone.